Welcome to Couch Church, worshipping God at home. And today we are reminded that Jesus is the foundation of our faith. When Jesus asked, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let us make the same bold answer, and let us come together to worship Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. As we enter into our time of worship, let's pray together. Lord, do we really believe that we are in the presence of the Son of the living God? Still our hearts now, so that we may truly appreciate who you are 
As we hear these words of power, we bow down before you and praise you. Amen. We come now to our time of confession where we confess to our loving, merciful and forgiving God those parts of our lives that we would like to make better and we ask for God's forgiveness. Lord, you are the foundation of our faith and we thank you that you are always ready to forgive us when we trust you enough to confess our sins to you. You are the foundation of our faith, and we ask you to forgive us for the times when we forget that you are our foundation. Forgive us for the times we see you as less than the Son of God, the solid foundation of our faith. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sentence of scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Our prayer of the day, let us pray. O God, fount of all wisdom, in the humble witness of the apostle Peter, you have shown us the foundation of our faith. Give us the light of your spirit that Recognising in Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God, we may be living stones for the building up of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, 
but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness.
a Peter, the rock on which I will build my church. The gates of hell will not hold out against it. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I shouldn't be here today. I should be on my way to Oberammergau in Germany. And I'm very aware that some of you who are watching should also be on your way there or to other destinations that you've been dreaming of going to. It's hard having to accept that in this world of COVID-19, many of our plans and our dreams have been broken or at the very least postponed. So with all of that in mind, today I'm not going to do any slow motion leaps off a chair. I'm not going to teach you how to bake sourdough bread. I just want to talk. I want to talk about plague and I want to talk about the church. Doesn't sound very exciting, does it? But bear with me. For those of you who've never heard of Oberammergau, it's a village in Bavaria. And it, every 10 years, the villagers of Oberammergau perform a passion play, which is the drama reenacting Jesus' arrest and trial and death. They've been doing this every 10 years for nearly 400 years. But why? Well, here's how the story goes. In the first half of the 1600s, there was a devastating pandemic the bubonic plague. Oberammergau somehow managed not to have any deaths until a man returned home from working away and he brought the plague with him. Half the villagers died. The remaining people were in despair. And in this world that was collapsing around them, all that was left to put their trust in was Jesus. And they clung on to him as a firm foundation. They waited and they prayed. And they vowed that if God spared them, they would perform a passion play every 10 years. From that point, says the legend, no more people in Oberammergau died. And so the people of the village honoured their promise to God and have been performing the Passion Play for 400 years. In all that time, the Passion Play has only ever been cancelled twice. Most recently was in 1940 because of World War II. It has been postponed once, that was in 1920. And tragically, that was because so many of the men of the village had died in World War I. There weren't enough of them to make up the cast of the play. 
And now, this year, the play has been postponed again because of COVID, our new pandemic. COVID-19 might not be on the same scale as the bubonic plague, but we do find ourselves in a world which is strange to us, that is not new, the world of pandemic. Pandemics were not even a new thing back in the 1600s. Another 300 years earlier, there'd been an even bigger pandemic of the bubonic plague. We call it the Black Death. There's a village in the UK called Ashwell, which has a really unique record of the Black Death. When the plague reached Ashwell, it killed 80% of the people of the village. Now the village had a new church and those who survived took refuge in the church and they waited and they prayed. They didn't know if they would survive. And someone, probably the priest, carved some graffiti into the stone wall of the new church to record the horror that they were facing. The carving says, the year 1350, wretched, terrible, destructive year, only the remnants of the people remain. That church in Ashwell is still there today. I have seen this graffiti and it's incredibly moving to think of how those people fled to the church for refuge, to wait and to pray. They waited, frightened and clinging on to Jesus. And so we're reminded that in times of pandemic and in many other times of trouble, people for centuries have come together to wait and to pray as the church. Which brings me in a kind of roundabout way to today's gospel, which is all about being the church. Jesus makes rather a strange statement to Simon Peter in today's gospel. He says, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. Now, this is a statement that has rather ironically caused the church over the centuries to split into little bits. The Roman Catholics have said, this is what Jesus meant. And the Eastern Orthodox Church has said, no, this is what Jesus meant. And the Protestants have said, no, no, this is what Jesus meant. So what did Jesus mean when he said, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church? Well, it's important for us to remember that Jesus gave his disciples nicknames. James and John were known as the Sons of Thunder, and Simon was nicknamed Rocky, or in Latin, Peter. We can probably guess why Jesus gave him that nickname of Rocky. Rocky, Peter, was, was a bit unpolished. He was outspoken. He got things wrong fairly often. He was enthusiastic, but sometimes he missed the point. He was, he was a bit rocky. So on this particular day, Jesus was asking his disciples what, what they thought. Who do you say I am? And Rocky, Peter, blurted out, you are the Messiah sent from God. For once, Rocky had got it right. And so then Jesus played on his nickname. He made a pun. Jesus said, Rocky, on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus didn't mean Peter so much as he meant what Peter had said. The church would be built on the rock that is Peter's testimony, the realisation of who Jesus is. The church was to be a gathering of people who testified that Jesus is the Messiah, sent by God. And that testimony is traced all the way back to the first person who said it, Peter, Rocky. It's recorded in our Gospel today. And that's our foundation. Jesus Christ, 
Jesus the Messiah, who is sent by God. A sure and firm foundation in a world where things that we think are safe and stable turn out not to be. I think most of us in Australia and in other parts of the so-called first world thought that our lives were pretty settled and stable and secure, probably right back until February this year. And then suddenly everything was shaken up. People have lost businesses and homes. People have lost their lives. Health systems have come close to collapse under the strain. We can't even do the things that we used to do to take a bit of a break when things were stressful. We can't travel. We can't go to a play or to a concert. We can't even have big gatherings of friends and family. So we are unsettled and we're uncertain. But for centuries and centuries, Christians have gathered as the church in times like this. They've gathered to wait and pray when their lives were shaken. And in the past, the church has physically gathered like the people of Oberammergau did or the people in that little village in England, Ashwell. They've gathered physically. But in this time of COVID-19, where we now know more about disease, we know that it is not so safe to gather together physically without taking quite extreme precautions. We can't be church the way that we've always been church. How are we to support our community, care for each other, worship, and share God's love with our neighbours when we're not gathered together in the ways that we used to be, the ways that we know. And that makes us feel even more shaken and even more uncertain. But our foundation has not been shaken because our foundation is Jesus, Messiah, Jesus Christ, sent by God as Peter testified all that long time ago. And as the world wobbles and shakes around us, we must hold on to that. Our foundation is Jesus, our firm foundation. And at the moment, yeah, we can't be church in the way that we have been in the past. And we're not sure how we will be church in the years to come. We're in a time of extreme uncertainty. But there is one thing we can do right now, even while things are so unknown and while our future direction seems hidden. There is one thing we're called to do at times like this, but we don't know what to do. It's what God's people have always done. Wait and pray. It's our time, our turn now, to wait and to pray. It's not so easy. We know how to do things to be church. Some of us, and I would include myself in this, are not so great at just waiting and praying. When I say wait, it's not a passive or a hopeless waiting. We're waiting knowing we are in the presence of Christ. We're praying with Jesus' love for a world which is broken and suffering. So wait with hope in Jesus' presence and pray for his world. Wait and pray knowing that our unshakable foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
we come now to affirm our faith together. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for the world and for the Church. Lord Jesus Christ, sent to open the gateway to God's kingdom, we bring you our prayers for your world and for your church. You are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to your broken and bleeding world. We pray for the people whose lives have been torn apart by war, disaster and disease. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, Hear our cry to you. You are the way, the truth and the life. Give holy wisdom to the leaders of the church. Lead us in your way and guide us in your truth that we may live in love for you and for each other. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our cry to you. You are the close companion of the lonely. May all who are lonely feel your loving presence. You are the comforter of the brokenhearted. May those who are grieving know your consolation. You are the healer of the suffering. Bring release to those in anguish of body, mind or spirit, that in their pain they may know your peace. We bring before you especially those who have asked for our prayers for healing. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our cry to you. You are the resurrection and the life. Raise us out of death to new life. May we, like Simon Peter, Recognize you as Messiah. May we dwell in your presence now and always. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our cry to you. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
It's the end of our time together in Couch Church. So let's close with a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, as we watch and wait and pray in this time of uncertainty, remind us each day that you are our foundation. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our foundation. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.